Okay, in this video I want to talk about the beta sheet, um, the second most common secondary structure that you're going to encounter in proteins. So uh, I have a little bit of information on it. I want to re-record this because it didn't look good. it didn't look so good the first time, so I want to go back through it again properly here. And the first thing I want to say is that the beta sheet, this is the second form of regular secondary structure found in proteins. It is somewhat less common than the alpha helix. So it's somewhat less common than the alpha helix, but still quite common. And here I just put a couple of bulleted points to kind of demonstrate what I felt were some of the important points about the helix, about the beta sheet rather. And that is the peptide backbone in the beta sheet is almost completely extended. Um, hydrogen bonding can be formed between different parts of a chain that is double backed on itself or between different chains. So that's kind of an important distinction that you can actually have the chain double back on itself and form hydrogen bonds. Or the more common way you'll probably see it in most textbooks is that you'll see um, hydrogen bonding between different chains. And there are two different forms of beta sheet. So there's a anti-parallel beta sheet and there is a parallel beta sheet. So I basically drew these arrows just to show that what I mean by a parallel beta sheet is that both strands are running in the same direction here. And what I mean by an anti-parallel beta sheet is that both of these are running in opposite directions. So if this were, say, my N terminus over here, N terminus on this end, C terminus on this end, it would be N to C, and then over here it would be N to C. So it, should, it would just be the reverse. And on the parallel beta sheet, it would be N to C, N to C. So both the C terminals would be on the same side. And um, the last thing I want to say was the hydrogen bonds are perpendicular to the direction of the protein chain. So they're perpendicular to the direction of the protein chain. And to show that, I have a little picture here. And I just wanted to point out a few things about the picture, first of all, making the distinction that this here is the anti-parallel beta sheet. So you can see the arrows running in opposite directions. And you can see over here that this is the N-terminus, and this is the C-terminus, and over here this is the N-terminus, this is the C-terminus. So just like I talked about just a second ago. Um, and the other thing I want to point out is that these hydrogen bonds in the anti-parallel beta sheet are perfectly lined up. Each strand essentially perfectly lines up and forms a perfect hydrogen bond. So that's important. Another interesting thing about the um, beta sheet in general is that we saw with the alpha helix that every four residues the structure repeated. So every four or so residues the structure tended to repeat. In this one it's going to be essentially every other one. Because if we look at these R chains here, we got this R group here, or rather this one that I marked off is a good one to look at. So we have these R groups here. And they're both facing inside. They're both facing inside of this hydrogen bond, these two hydrogen bonded chains. Now, you want these R groups to have a positive interaction. So if these are, if this one's hydrophobic, then I also want this one to be hydrophobic. Because then I got these hydrophobic interactions that I talked about in the other video, which is favorable. I don't want this to be polar and this to be hydrophobic because that's going to mess up these interactions. That's not, not going to allow these to positively associate with each other. So that's important. And then likewise, if I look at one of these groups up here that say this is facing the solvent up here, so say this is in, in the solvent, then I want these to be polar so that they can form positive interactions with the uh, solvent. So if I'm saying like, oh, this R group over here is maybe like a cysteine or something, or um, rather a serine, so I'll put in my OH, and then I got my water molecule here, my solvent, and I can form a positive hydrogen bond there. And I can form a, a hydrogen bond there. So this becomes a favorable interaction as well. I want favorable interactions over here as well. Um, as far as the parallel beta sheet goes, the main difference is that the direction they run, and remember I said this is the N-terminus, and um, this is the C-terminus. So anyway, what I wanted to say about this was the hydrogen bonds. If you notice, these hydrogen bonds are a little offset. And this little bit of offset, you know, this with the way they're offset slightly, that makes this less stable than the anti-parallel beta sheet. So that's kind of the important point that I wanted to make about the beta sheets. Now, 
In this section, I just wanted to talk a little bit about two of the less common irregular shapes that you might find, and one of them is the beta bulge, which is a common non-repetitive irregularity found in the anti-parallel beta sheets. It occurs between two normal beta structure hydrogen bonds and involves two residues on one structure and one on the other. So what I have here is a couple different examples of a beta bulge and you'll notice the bulge in each of the structures. This is the classic bulge over here. This is a G1 bulge here. And this is what's called a wide bulge over here. So those are the three different forms that you might see. It's just important more or less to be aware of this, not so much to be able to like draw the structures or anything like that. So in this next one, I have the reverse turn. And the reverse turn says, Peptide folding requires the peptide backbones and secondary structures to be able to change directions. Often a reverse turn marks a transition between one secondary structure and another. Glycine is encountered in reverse turns. This is because the single hydrogen on the side chain prevents crowding. The cyclic structure of proline has the correct geometry for, the, for a reverse turn. It is frequently encountered in, in reverse turns as well. So I should say reverse. But so if we, if we talk about these reverse turns and they say, well, first of all, we should know that we're going to frequently encounter glycine and proline in the reverse turns. So we're going to frequently encounter these two amino acids, or rather amino residues. And if I were asked to draw these really quick, I would maybe say something like this. Here's my beta sheet, my anti-parallel beta sheet, and this would be my reverse turn. So that would be my reverse turn. And you could do the same thing with, say, you know, something like this, and then we'll say we draw an alpha helix, so we'll have a reverse turn connecting here, and then maybe we'll have something else over here, another another beta sheet over here and these reverse turns would connect the helix to the, each one of these beta sheets. So that's basically all I want to say for this video. Thanks.